Good morning, uh, colleagues. Can everyone hear me? Uh, I will make a start because I'm mindful um, of the time. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to join you again today um, uh, as part of uh, discussions around safeguarding. My name is Walter Lloyd Smith. I'm the manager with the Norfolk Safeguarding Adults Board. I am going to be quick because I've got quite a lot of updates and information that I was really keen to share with you and there is a handout that I put on the chairs that I'll come to in a moment. Hold it the other way around. That's it, you've done it. You've done it. Right. When I was growing up and you started the summer holidays, six, seven, eight, one of the things that I looked forward to was being given the opportunity to buy the summer bumper edition of the Vino. And that would sort of last me through the summer. So I'm hoping what I'm going to do today is your equivalent for a bumper update version on adult safeguarding um, and send you back to, to work with, I hope, some really helpful and valuable updates and, and additional information. So this is your summer bumper update uh, version. Right. So, first thing, um, this is about what we are trying to do going forwards as the board with your support and support from all of our sectors across Norfolk is a cultural change in the way we think about safeguarding. Part of that is seeing a safeguarding concern that you raise to the local authority not as a negative, co negative comment on your service. There are many providers that think in that way and it's really positive and what we are keen to do is spread that thinking more widely across all providers from all sectors and part of that as you can see on this slide is also a change that we're trying slowly to uh, just sort of spread around the language we use to try and make the language we use when we're talking about safeguarding we hope a bit more accessible so as you can see from the slide we are trying to move away from talking about strategy discussions strategy meetings etc and moving to talking about safeguarding discussions and safeguarding planning discussions as a way to try and make that language, we hope, just a little bit more user-friendly and accessible. A piece of work that is live at the moment is an update to the board's safeguarding policy and procedure, which will come out later in the year. And if you're on the email alert, you'll be sort of given the heads up that that's coming. And you'll see this language reflected in that new revised and updated policy and procedure. So I'm giving you a heads up um, around that today. And on your seats is a copy of a flow diagram. And that's the picture, if you like, of the journey of raising a safeguarding concern in Norfolk. Now I've held that back and is being launched with your good selves today. You are the first people to see this in Norfolk, and it will later go up onto the board website. Alongside that, the second document you've got is a set of frequently asked questions. So what the document tries to do, what this flow diagram is helping us, we hope, is explain to yourself and your staff teams what happens when you ring 034 to ring, ring in that safeguarding concern. Now I'm not going to go through this in detail because unfortunately um, we haven't the time today but I'm just going to highlight a couple of points around it and that's for you to take away um, and share with your teams and you'll be able to download extra copies from, from the website I hope this afternoon if not early tomorrow morning. So here we are, we're raising a concern. We're on the sort of left-hand side of the page um, and it gives you some information about what actually happens uh, when you make that call. Now, interestingly, a lot of the feedback that I get from with providers' help is sometimes they think when they're ringing the number, they're worried about a person, they want to raise that safeguarding concern. We're not yet talking about a referral. 
under the Care Act, an inquiry, and sometimes providers may think they're speaking direct to the multi-agency safeguarding hub or MASH. No, you're speaking with customer services first, who hard hands off your call to SKI. And hopefully you can see that more clearly on, on the flow diagram. Then they gather the information from you. So we're here in the referral column, if you like. And those, that information build, that picture that is created, is then to ask the question, does it meet the criteria for a safeguarding out of inquiry? Yes, no. If the answer is no, you should have that concern also picked up maybe in another way. Maybe it needs to be signposted onto another, another approach. Maybe it's a quality issue, whatever. Maybe it needs an assessment, and so on. We then come through, and as, you, and as I touched on briefly, the change of language is across the bottom, so planning discussion, and that's where then the local authority safeguarding team will think about the information they've got and who else can, can feed, feed into that. We then move across the flow diagram, as you can see, we're here at the section, safeguarding section 42 planning, assessment and review part of the process. And again, unfortunately I haven't got time to go through it in detail, I just wanted to, to make, sort of make you aware of that process. And you'll go round that cycle as many times as is appropriate in order to resolve that safeguarding issue of concern. And that's the picture overall. Now, as you can see also, underpinning this process are the principles of making safeguarding personal. And we've got information uh, just here. But we've also included some information to assist and help you around the legal duty that the board has to carry out a safeguarding adult review, again, when the criteria is met. Because Though we do get referrals in when, when unfortunately cases have gone very wrong and we believe and we understand there may be learning there to change what we do in Norfolk, are we receiving enough referrals for consideration? Possibly not. So again, what we're trying to do with this material to support and help you is just flag that up again. So across the bottom you'll see some information about safeguarding adult reviews. Some very quick updates for you, uh, as I said. First thing, just to flag, is um, we do, as a board, we don't have a dedicated training role yet. Uh, that's an ambition that the board wants to develop over time. But what we do have is a program that I think a number of colleagues in the room may have, may have uh, been involved with or attended, is a train the trainer program. There is a modest cost to, to attending, but what that gives you is opportunity to test the material that we provide to you to deliver to your workforces three, three safeguarding awareness training programs, full day, half day and a refresher. The next course that we've got coming up is on the 5th of September. Uh, it's taking place in Great Yarmouth. There are still places available. And that was an unsolicited quote that was sent to me by a colleague from South Norfolk. Um, having attended the last session. Uh, and I'll hopefully let the quote speak for itself. We've also produced, uh, and I'm very thankful and would like to sort of acknowledge the, the support and work we had from North Kent Council's QA team, and Tim in particular, for bringing together guidance around safeguarding and medication error. That's been published, it's on the board website, and I would encourage, indeed, if you haven't seen it, to download a copy. Safeguarding a medication error, some of those situations that occur when you are supporting someone with their medication are clearly safeguarding issues that need to be reported. An incident where one of your staff members writes on the Mar chart in blue pen is not a safeguarding issue. It certainly needs a response whether that's some extra training, supervision, a, ref a reminder that we use black, not blue, or very simply to take all the blue pens out of the care home, out of the setting, so nobody can write in blue pen. Yes? 
And what the document we hope has done, again to support you, is to provide you with some very concrete examples so you feel clear what you need to do in terms of reporting it to, through to the local authority in terms of a safeguarding concern and what other responses may be appropriate. The bottom line is when you identify a medication error, something must happen, a management response is needed, but it may not always be a safeguarding requirement. So that document is available, it's on the board website. Please have a, have a look, download copies, share it with your teams, etc. We've also got some guidance on the website now around resuscitation and safeguarding. Um, and that may be something that your service and staff are required to know about. Um, and that came out of a number of cases that we became aware of and recognising that there was an, again a need to, we hope, provide more guidance and support. Norfolk County Council has um, provided some updated information around its use of uh, the portal and the online forms for recording um, concerns for harm to an individual. Um, and that information has, I believe, understood come out. What I need just to emphasise here for us today is that process is not for an individual who is at immediate risk. You would continue to do as you are doing, ringing 0344. This process uh, is for reporting concerns which are non-urgent, which you have addressed and approached, but you need to share that information through to the local authority. Give you an example. Resident on resident physical assault. One resident may have slapped or hit another one. You've immediately intervened. You've done some very positive work to keep both residents safe. Um, you've, re you've updated care plans. You've, you've, you've responded proactively and positively. There's no immediate risk to those individuals from then on, but you do need to report that. And you can use the online system to do so. Um, you don't need to ring that, that through. As you can see, you can do this at any time. It's an online system. It's the way that the local authority is starting to develop its services in more detail around how it inter interacts and engages with, with providers. You do need to create an account, but I understand that that's fairly straightforward and that will walk you through that process. And when submitting, a key piece of information is to indicate that you're submitting it on behalf of uh, someone else in a professional capacity. Now that information goes through and populates the care record directly, so it's very valuable in that way and it builds that picture. Now, the information that's recently come out, I understand, contains some examples, and they are just those. They are examples to try and assist you. Um, so continue to use good professional judgment that you have and recognising when you need to ring a concern through on 0344 and when you can use uh, the portal to report that information. What's been really helpful and I've mentioned safeguarding and medication error guidance, is also a number of providers have, have sort of flagged that there is an on, a further piece of work we can helpfully do around falls and safeguard. And I think that's absolutely something we now need to, to, to sort of pick up and develop. And there may be a couple of colleagues in the room that would like to support us with that. So please, if you're interested, uh, come and see me uh, at, at the end. We've got a couple of seminars coming. Um, we've recently held a, a, a seminar earlier in the year on self-neglect and hoarding. Uh, very successful. We're going to make a slight change to that. You can see the date there. It's happening at Deer and Football Club uh, at the end of October. We're going to adjust the program slightly because I got overexcitable and I put lots of material in. And unfortunately, we weren't able to have that deep and perhaps richer discussion and conversation about a really tricky and difficult topic within safeguarding, that of self-neglect and or hoarding. Um, so we've, we've adjusted how we might approach that, but that's coming on the 31st. There'll be information about how to book on shortly on the website. We're also running a series of roadshows. You can see the dates on the slide. 
And again, information will be coming on the board website. Now, these roadshows are going to look at the issue of non-engagement. And a number of referrals that we received earlier in the year where uh, providers or organisations were saying we'd like you to look at this because we think there's a potential safeguarding adult review here. These, uh, there were four referrals that came in quite close together. None of them met the criteria for a full review, but the Safeguarding Adult Review Group said there's really valuable learning here and we don't want to lose that. So we've used that material to create these, these roadshows that are free to attend and that are coming later on in, in the year. So again, please watch the website for, for details. Just a quick request. The local authority um, has recently uh, sent a request round for unused uh, household furniture to support uh, Syrian refugee families that are now living, you know, are now being supported in Norfolk. You might be doing some refurbs uh, in, in, your, in, your, in your buildings, in your services. You might have some material, that some, some uh, furniture that, that could well be, do be donated. Um, please have a look, and if you can, that would be a very positive support uh, to, to that, that work we're trying to do to support that. Social media, if you don't follow the board on social media, please, please do. Uh, we now have, that's out of date, we now have 1,030 followers on, on Twitter. Um, and it's a very useful uh, channel by which we try and both receive information from followers, from different sectors across Norfolk and beyond, but also try and provide more information to, to support you. So if you're Twitter friendly, please, uh, please do follow us if you aren't already. A couple of valuable documents that have come out in the last couple of months that I thought might be of real interest, hopefully of interest, of value to you. Um, the Office of the Public Guardian has published its strategy around safeguarding and in there there's some really important asks of providers. They recognise that to deliver this strategy, to strengthen and improve their response to safeguarding, they need to do that in a, in a joint way and what the strategy document does is, is raise a number of very helpful opportunities that we have to support them in that regard. Um, there has been some information provided by SKI around safeguarding uh, and the charitable sector uh, and again that's a very helpful document. Now you in, as providers may not uh, be registered charities but you may well have connections with registered charities in the work that you do. <coughs> so you could very helpfully just sort of flag that up and share that with, with, provide, with other organisations you work with. And then finally, the, the Health Foundation, more recently, has published uh, a really interesting piece of work around what brings a person from a care setting into hospital. Um, and while it's not specifically talking around a safeguarding issue, I'm sure that that could be very helpful, just sort of reflection and learning. And, and the question that I would be interested in understanding more about is does that reflect our position here in Norfolk? What that national piece of work is, is scoping and showing us, are, are we seeing a similar picture here, here in Norfolk? Did anyone watch the Panorama programme? Yes. Yeah. Absolutely shocking and disturbing, upsetting um, and Having, has had a real impact, I would hope, again, on us as a network to try and drive safeguarding forwards. We showed this video, a short, a short version of it, at the last Safeguarding Out board meeting in July. And we used that, that video from, you know, that summary from Panorama, or clips from it, to focus the board's consideration of those issues because we do have some of those issues reflected in the Panorama programme here for us in our county. 
And it's important we remind ourselves that the job isn't done, that we still have more to do. But the success or otherwise of keeping people at risk from abuse and harm is built on a network response. It's built on the work that you do as providers and the work that you influence others to do around safeguarding. I'm not saying for one moment we've always got it right and we, we've got more work to do to strengthen the approach we have. But I would like to suggest to you that that programme about Wharton Hall is a very strong and important reminder. A couple of providers have got in touch when it, uh, after it was shown and they said, Walter, we've taken the opportunity to show that to our, at our staff meeting. There's about a four or five minute clip that you can download from YouTube and a number of providers have got in touch with me and said, we've actively used that to remind ourselves of the central importance of, of safeguarding. That's me done, but I'm...